Well, we got a lot of people that are going to come visit my dad over the next couple of weeks and kind of help him get on his feet again. A lot of you folks might never have been out to his house before. Even some of you have, might never have kind of had a look around and see how he lives. So I'm going to kind of show you. This is Roy's house. We're coming in the back door here. He's got a glass porch sliding door here. Overlooking the forest. This is where the bears try to get us from time to time. And you'll see that on either side of the door, he's got himself a whole bunch of bird diagrams. I don't hear really seeing too much in the light there, but this way you can kind of look at these little bird diagrams that help them identify, there we go, some of these birdies that we see outdoors, of which we have quite a few, quite a variety. So this is our dining room. He's got a bunch of his AA books over there and pictures of family. Goes down to the garage and the laundry room. He's... Three paintings here I've seen in our home since as long as I can remember, as far back as when I was born, and same with that little old clock, and those little old gas-powered lamps, been as long as I can remember. So we got our kitchen over here on the left, and we're going to kind of go into the main living room area here, and where he keeps his computer in here, he does his genealogy work here in this corner, you can see on the computer there, that's his. He's got a picture of my mom and him, and uh, he spends several hours a day here doing genealogy work and uh, collecting photos of old Ella J. That's kind of his stash right here. You can see his Sanford family history there atop it. And he's got quite a few CDs worth of data and, and photos and things and documents that he's collected over the years. There's really quite a bit here. He's got his collection of trusted servants, literature, and such. I'm going to take you on down the hall towards his room. Living room is just your basic TV, books, some movies. Got us this lovely little fireplace here that hadn't been fired up in a while. We're going to have to probably get the flu clean before that thing gets fired up again. So Roy's room is down this long hallway. It goes the whole length of the house. You go past a couple of closets. And you probably guess this is my room. And you see the entering Twilight Zone sign. If that doesn't tip you off, then probably the one that says entering Arkham Asylum. Tell you where you're heading. So head on down that hall. We got Roy's office is over here on the right. Not a whole lot going on in here lately. It's mainly been a photo project that we've been working on, breaking down old photos and got a barrel scanner that we've been, uh, it's like a negative scanner, you run negatives through it and uh, you can get prints out of things that, uh, well, we you really can't get negatives printed anymore. So we've been making a, a lot of scans of photos that we've been digging up and then Roy keeps his collections, shells and such. And some Neat books at his old desk. And a huge assortment of certificates for various programs and certifications. And there we go. Memorabilia from traveling cross countries. And my mom's ashes. It's kind of a little memorial that he's got set up for my mom. Along with his favorite picture of them both that you might have seen on the screensaver out there so he's got another work desk back here that he doesn't really work at too often anymore he tends to do his work out there at his computer desk now but he has a lot of his files back in here we're gonna go ahead and roll on back out the door and I'm gonna show you where he spends when he's not at his computer and he's not out and about on the town just for an 89 year old he does get out and about this would be my dad's room He's got these lovely hardwood floors, and because he never wears socks, his feet are always chapped. These floors just suck the moisture right out of them. So he's got this huge bed, some kind of weird water bed frame that he filled up. Old furniture that, again, I remember from far back as uh, when, when I was born. 
He has this lovely note waiting for him from a bunch of his friends and associates, signed him well wishes. He keeps a lot of his personal tokens and memorabilia and medallions back here. And you'll notice there's a Indian theme to everything. Some of the paintings are actually by uh, people he knew, like Peg Shellen, who was an artist here in L.J. She made a couple of these dream catchers. He has a lot of Indian artwork. But most of this is actually original artwork. A couple of them are prints out in the hallway. But, uh, got himself a lot of Indian memorabilia here. This is a lot of it came from my mom. Keeps a whole bookshelf here of Indian necklaces and totems and fans and the bottom shelves are all books about Indians. And that's where my dad sleeps. We're probably going to have some folks come on in and, uh, you know, kind of pull up some chairs. i got four or five chairs that uh, we can pull in here and they can all kind of hang around and kind of keep them from getting too bored as he gets those ribs better and gets ready to walk again. I'm going to show you his closet. He has a, a fairly impressive collection of uh, memorabilia related to his work with the trusted servants, all kinds of tapes and videotapes and audio tapes of conventions and things and uh, you've seen my dad in a lot of these clothes here I'm sure his favorite Indian shirt and I particularly want to show you my dad's tie rack here it's there's something like a hundred ties and they go back his entire life he's never thrown a tie away I'm going to show you just one here look at this insane tie I would guess this would be about 1977 or so and, and man I have a picture of him wearing this tie <laughs> and wearing it at work that is what he wore back then. <laughs> uh, he has the craziest collection I, I'm thinking actually that uh, I'm gonna actually spread these out so that everybody can look at them and, and uh, you can tell them about different ties and where he got them. He also has a collection of bolo necklaces and those of you who know him well will recognize a bunch of those. He tends to just wear medallions now. I'm guessing we're mainly just going to see him wearing medallions as we sit here and, and chat. This uh, bedspread that he uses it was made by his mom. And got his own bathroom here. My dad's totally independent. I've actually never even stepped in that bathroom until just a few days ago after he got taken to the hospital and uh, he's for 89 like I said about to turn 90 in two weeks uh, he's completely independent he does absolutely everything on his own uh, I do drive him and he does need a walker you know to walk more than uh, you know end of the hall I would rather be having a walker just in case we don't want him to fall again but other than that my dad has had not uh, not had that many ailments not had many problems and for 89 years old and about to turn 90 in two more weeks. He's like a little ever-ready bunny. You can't stop him. Well, that's my dad's house. If you ever wondered how Roy Vernon Sanford lives, you've now had the tour. That's where he spends probably eight hours a day doing his work. And, you know, I should point out his computer is, is Windows 10. I'm still using Windows 7. And my dad's the one who uses the cell phone. I had never sent a text until this week while he was in the hospital. My dad's far more technologically advanced than I am. He was the one that got the flat screen TV and the dish uh, satellite system. And yeah, I've always been two, three, four, or five steps behind my dad. I'm awful proud of him. So come on by, come see him. Maybe just send him a message if you can't, if you can't come on up, up here to LJ. Maybe you're afraid of one of the bars eating you that's always chasing us around. But if you can, come on, hang out with my daddy. Tell him what you think of the work he does. And we're going to kind of keep him busy and entertained until he's back on his feet and get back to what he does. Saving souls.